Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar. My name is Michelle Lancer-Smith. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at ePay Systems. And today we're going to be talking about workforce reporting, how to show an ROI and a good return on your HR investment. And where it really comes down to is can you get the data and the information out in the way you want to do it so you can understand um, what type of productivities and cost savings you can get and how you can impact the bottom line and, and as you make future changes. So it's a very exciting topic. We only have 30 minutes today, though, so we're going to move pretty quickly. Um, I want to welcome John Gattayuso. He is our senior sales engineer. Welcome, John. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everybody that joined us today. Really appreciate the time. Uh, we're also going to have a guest speaker a little bit later on, but uh, we'll keep that as a surprise until later, but we think you're going to really uh, get some really good insight from his experience in this area. So please hang on. Uh, the agenda today is I'll just give a couple minutes on ePay and who we are, and then we're going to talk about data and why HR reporting matters to, uh, matters to HR and what kind of decisions they can make. John is actually going to go into our system and show you the reports that we're able to produce and how it helps companies. And we're going to talk about our uh, analytics that is available today to really help you understand the ROI that you're getting on your time tracking system and on your uh, employees and workers out there and how you can really manage things to, to decrease your labor costs. So that's what we're going to cover today. A little bit about ePay systems. We've been in the business since 2001. We've been in the HCM space. Our specialty starts with workforce management. We serve clients that have very complex labor. A lot of our clients are distributed, meaning they have employees scattered from location to location, and they may be working at different job sites or working for different customers throughout the day. That creates a very complex workforce. You have to deal with a lot of things such as pay differentials, shift differentials. Uh, many of our clients have a lot of uh, union, uh, unions that they're trying to deal with in terms of their payrolls. A lot of things that make it hard to really track your uh, employees and pay them. And that's the environment that we love. Not the plain Jane time tracking type of system, but the one that can handle the very robust needs of a very complex distributed workforce. We have many, many uh, locations around the world that we serve. We uh, are able to deploy our workforce management system across the globe. In fact, you can see some of our clients down there, uh, whereas like such as the U.S. Army that uses us across the globe in uh, managing their time. And then, of course, we're also to provide payroll and other types of HR solutions, the full suite here in America. We are the industry leader when it comes to workforce management and getting a good return because of the information that our clients can get out of the system. And that's, again, what John's going to show you today. Because we ha offer 24-7 support to everyone, everyone, all clients get 24-7 premium support, we boast a retention rate, a customer retention rate of 99%. So we're really proud of that because our customers love the support that they get. So again, as I said, we've got a lot to show you and we're going to talk a little bit about um, why you need good reports so that you can get the data you need to make better decisions. Obviously, we all know why, very simply, why we need that, that, that data, right, to make those decisions. But how often do you struggle in really getting the things and trying to narrow it down and get flexible reporting that makes your life easier? How often do you struggle and say, if I only knew this, I would be able to go in and make some changes maybe at the site level or at the location level? And I'd be able to talk to those field managers and see what we could do in terms of maybe how they're auditing timesheets or how they're adding punches or the issues they might be having with the collection devices or are they, you know, fudging their budget numbers. Wouldn't it be nice if you had that information at your fingertips down to the site level, down to the employee level, so you can make those changes? 
and you wouldn't have to worry about how you got that information? Well, John's going to show you a lot of that today, and you can see what we do at ePay Systems to help our clients. So I'm going to turn it over to John, and he's going to talk about where uh, the different types of reporting that we like to specialize in. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at, um, first we're going to look at actually operational efficiencies and look at, you know, really scheduling and, and what it looks like from that standpoint, because it's important to know when your employees are going to show up and know that they're actually going to be there as well. We'll look at budgetary because you want to make sure you're, you're staying within your labor budget, both in hours as well as dollars, um, and, and how you can be alerted on things like that. And then we'll also get into the compliance piece, which is helpful in reducing your compliance risk with Department of Labor, as well as helping your, you know, even your operational efficiencies to, um, to really reduce the number of, of time that's being spent in terms of correcting employees' punches. Um, and when we talk about stuff, we'll, we'll really get deep into it. So as we look at the first piece, which is scheduling, um, you know, we want to be able to obviously schedule the employees. We also need to be able to do an attendance report so that you can identify who's early, who's late, who's a no-show. Another factor that you can add in there is also an employee point section where based off of their attendance, you can assign points so that you have a non-biased view towards uh, towards employees who, who based off of their attendance. So you can add a point for, you know, for them being late. And once they reach a thir uh, certain threshold, they get a verbal warning. They get to the next threshold and now it's a written warning. They get to the next threshold, it's their second written and then so on and so forth until they become terminated. And now you have proof that this is the reason why somebody has been let go is because they just weren't very good at showing up and they're not reliable, all right? And as we look at some of these reports all together here, as we log into the system, um, we'll be able to look at the various information. We'll look at you know what a schedule looks like let me in here. Um, we'll look at, you know, an attendance report. We'll also look at something that we call our schedule tracker. Go to a different URL. Um, and as I'm struggling to get into my system right now, um, so I'll talk through that. So we do have a schedule tracker, which actually overlays the attendance report on top of um, So the, that attendance report will be overlaid on top of the schedules that you can see and identify that type of information. Looks like Murphy's playing in the pipes today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to load it up on another computer here. So as we look at scheduling and the various reports that are in here, you know, you've got your schedule planner, which is really your future use to identify, um, you know, when people are scheduled. So looking at it in the future, making adjustments where I can go in and I can schedule somebody else here. So I've got an open slot. I can go in. I can schedule somebody that's available. You can even look at proximity for how close they are to the job site, as well as if you're, you're if they've already been working. Is there any anticipated overtime? So if I look at Cora over here, I may not want to schedule her because I can see that if I do, she's going to go into some overtime. And when I assign that to that employee, you'll see I get some check boxes in here as well because now the employee gets a notification letting them know that, um, letting them know what, that they can acknowledge that shift or decline that shift. Just helps the managers identify who's going to show up and not show up. And as we look to continue our, our roadmap items and, and do shift bidding and show, uh, shift swapping, you start to get the employee self-scheduling portion where they're scheduling themselves as part of that. The other pieces to that is being able to look at the schedule tracker, which looks at post-creation um, uh, <coughs> post of the schedule 
and actually once employees have punched in and out where we overlay the attendance report on top of the schedule so that you can start to see employees that are no-shows, they're early, they, they're late, and as I go back in time here, I can see those, that information down here where we color code it based off the various things and you can see what those color codes mean. So I've got employees that punched in but weren't scheduled to work, I've got no-shows, I've got employees that are early or late, and then again also adding in the um, adding in that, that ability to do the employee points, right? And then we can also go in the report section and there's, you know, an hours ratio report or even your staffing report, which is going to allow you to look and see if I go to my scheduling demo site one more time here, I'm going to be able to go in. I can see who's off and when. I can see when they're scheduled to work and what their schedule, uh, what their shift is for that at that location. So I can get a, a visual view of all that information. There's even an employee scheduler view where you can look at it uh, by employee in here, and you can see when they're scheduled to work. You can even make adjustments to the schedule from here. So if you want to change the change their shifts, change their schedules from here, you can actually quickly and easily do that from here as well. All right. Now, as we look at the next portion in here, which is going to be budgeting, budgeting is important because you need to know and identify, are you going to go over your labor budget, which could be important for um, different types of, of, uh, of, of businesses where you may have a fixed cost. So if you go over your labor budget, you're losing money. Whereas, whereas if you're under your budget, you're, you're being profitable, right? So being able to identify that information with various reports, but then also alerts to help identify when you're starting to go over that is also important. So as we look at those types of reports, um, and we'll first start out and actually the alerts. Because one thing is to be proactively alerted that, hey, I'm reaching 91.25% of my budget. So as an on-site manager, I can know when I'm reaching 91%, that way I can look at things more closely. Again, utilizing my schedule, as well as um, knowing where my labor budget currently stands. My boss, though, can get it at 99%. So you can even tear the alerts so that different people get them at different thresholds, and the alerts go out via email or text message to them so that they know that, hey, I'm going over my labor budget, or you're getting close to your labor budget. And you can look at it on a weekly basis, you can base it on a reporting basis, or on a daily basis as well. So you have flexibility there, right? But there's other reports that you can run where you can identify that. And I'm gonna run into various items where I'm just gonna show you really quick, really quick, where I go to my timesheets page and I can quickly see that I'm over my labor budget for hours, but I'm actually under my budget for my dollar amounts here at Soldier Field. So I have quick access to see that type of information in here. Even within my dashboard in here, I can see if I'm going over my labor budget. Now this is only basing it off of a two-day time span, span for my budget. That's why I'm not over it. Um, but I can look at the details and I can see if I'm going over that or not. I can also go in in the report section and I can go into my timesheets and I just want to look at, you know, show me my timesheet overview report, right? And again, you have your color coding over here letting you know that, yep, I'm over my budget here but also I can break it down by task in here and set up a labor budget by task. Uh, anybody that knows our system is that this location and this task are customizable labels where you can change it. So there, there's flexibility in the system and how this works um, and how we label things in here. So it's, it's to our, our nomenclature of our customers, right? Again, hours, dollars, you see both in here. You could also run into a timesheet where you're looking at an anticipated overtime report where you're looking to see, okay, you know, are these employees going to be going into overtime? So this is more of the report form. And again, you can also see that in the scheduling portion as well. So there's a lot of interoperability between the different portions of this so that you can see a lot of the information in a lot of different places. So it's make, really making it helpful for you to make decisions very easily um, without having to run over to five different areas to see that information. Um, another report that we'll show in here, since we are talking about budgets, is actually a um, budget report, timesheet, budget report, right? And this is actually going to show me my variance, right? And we look at my variance, this is going to show me my budgeted hours, my actual, and what my variance is in here. And I can run this on, a, on whatever time span that I want in here, and we'll go ahead and calculate those that information in here. All right, when we get into our, in our next one, which is really going to be our compliance, we'll also see another report in there that we can look at basing it off of the projected hours along with the actual hours and the budget and see what that variance is. 
And now he can start talking about those compliance reports where by looking at this information, whether it's ACA, whether it's an accident report where you're trying to help reduce worker comp claims by asking a simple question when the employees clock out, did you work safe? Um, to actually analytics, which we'll talk about as the last portion here. Um, and there's different things that we can look at, right? And we talk about um, compliance is how can we help reduce your compliance risk, right? And a lot of that is, is dealing with reports, um, but also the analytics, which is going to help identify where your problem areas are so you can reduce those number of touches um, from a, a manager. And we start talking about touches, that's where we really start talking about the analytics. And as I go back into the system here, as we're, we're, as we're flipping back and forth, there's a lot of different things that we can we can run, right? We can look at our, our accident report in here and see, you know, did anybody respond that they had an accident, right? You can also be alerted that, hey, somebody said that they had an accident, which is also important because you want to know that right away. Where that accident question really helps though is that if they answer yes, come back the next day, say they got hurt, well, when they left, they said they were perfectly fine, right? So they have more burden of proof to identify that they really did get hurt on the job and it wasn't something that happened after work like a baseball game or a basketball game or something of that nature that they did they um, you know they got hurt somewhere else than the job right we can also look at ACA reports because ACA is still important right, right now um, where you can identify your full-time equivalents in the system you can look at your average number of hours that the employees are working another report that I don't have up here is the our eligibility predictor report where it bases the average number of hours and identifies, are they likely to become eligible? Are they less likely to become eligible for benefits and things like that? What's important here is being able to look at the average number of hours so that you can see during my measurement period, do they meet that criteria, right? The other piece of that is that you could also set up an alert that identifies, we call it our overtime alert, but the overtime alert could be set for a specific number of hours. So I could set it to 30 hours and say, all my part-time employees alert me when they reach over 30 hours. That way I can make sure I'm not scheduling for more than 30 hours in the coming weeks so I can reduce their average number of hours uh, for that measurement period. That way it can hover around that 30-hour that mark very easily. And, and I've also got customers that utilize our custom report writer that say, I'm looking at the total number of hours for the year and I'm subtracting that to their actual hours and this is the number of hours remaining left that they have available to them. So you can even use a customer report writer to create some custom reports to help you out with some of these things as well. All right. I'll also move now into the actual analytics piece, right? And when we start talking about analytics, this is where we start to talk about actual intelligence and reducing compliance risk and ultimately helping um, customers get through that process and identifying where are my problem areas and how can I help fix that, right? And as I bring up the next slide here, what we look at is some KPI, so your key performance indicators. So what that is is just a measurable value that's important for businesses so that they can reach certain goals, right? And as we look at the various things that we look at, it's looking at correction lag time by manager. And what that means is how quickly is that manager going in and correcting somebody's punch who forgot to punch in or they forgot to punch out or uh, punched outside of an acceptable pay, uh, punch radius, whatever that may be, right? It's how quickly do they do that, and the reason that's important is that you have better accurate data when somebody's in there on a daily basis making corrections, fixing the, the error within 24 hours, because errors are going to happen, right? But fixing it within 24 hours is a lot easier and a lot more accurate than waiting until payroll day where you're trying to correct 30 punches, 40 punches, a lot of punches, right? And now you have to track down not only just one employee, you have to track down maybe 10 employees. Now you're, you're wasting time trying to go through that process and identifying all those employees and, and trying to make those corrections on payroll day. And it's also been a week later or, or two weeks later. So the likelihood of you getting accurate data on that day is a lot less than going in there on a daily basis and making those corrections. And when you really start to take a step back and think about it, if you make, if you have a better upfront time and labor product, your payroll errors become less because you have better accurate data from your front end, which is your time and labor, right? So that's why that correction lag is important. You're also looking at different times that a uh, manager is going in and changing a punch. And, you know, a touch for a punch isn't always a, is something that's nefarious or something that's, that's bad. 
it could be that you know we need to do a re-implementation because there's the rules aren't set up the right way um you know you, you can look at various examples where you know somebody's going in and changing the employee's time or changing the rate because they should be getting overtime on, on saturdays because they work saturdays they get overtime well the system can actually handle those rules let the system work for you right one it alleviates the the pain of going in there and making those changes and reducing the number of time or um, amount of time you're in the system but also it's helping you reduce your compliance risk because each time you touch an employee's punch whether it's a time change whether it's a rate change whether you're adding a punch um, or zeroing out a punch it becomes a compliance risk where Department of Labor is going to start to ask you well why are you doing this right and Part of that is having a good audit trail as well. And that's why we can look at all of these different touches and identify a good audit trail that I, for you that identifies who, when, what, and why something changed, right? And as we look at the actual um, uh, uh, analytics in the system in here, you'll see here that we get a, a scorecard to the managers to help identify for them how are they doing. And you'll see the blue line, those are my actuals, the red is my is what I'm my, where I want to be, which could be a, a, a number value that, that's dictated to us. It could be based off of industry standards. It could be based off of average historical data as well. But where it helps is giving you that actual intelligence where it's telling you, hey, I've got exceptions in the system. Where is that happening? And I can go in and I can see I've got exceptions at my main office. I can call my main office and find out, hey, why, why do you have 100% of your punches? An example I like to give is from a true life experience is one of our customers experienced 83% of their punches were coming in as exceptions and they were using our, our IVR phone in system. Well, when they found out, they called up that manager and found out that most of their employees were from Somalia and only spoke Somali. It's not a standard language pack for us. However, working with us, we came up with a solution where we uh, created a cheat sheet for them where we put it in their language and the employees had that as part of their, their process to look over that, that cheat sheet while they're, they're in the call. And that helped reduce the number of exceptions from 83% down to 1% to 2%. So from 30 punches down to 1% to 2 punches a, a week, they were going in and correcting. You can see how that's going to help reduce your compliance risk by looking at that. And there's other KPIs that we look at in here from somebody going in and changing an employee's time to manually adding a punch to... Um, changing the uh, their rates in the system if they have access to do that. Remember, we can set up roles in our system so that they have they're given access on what they can do in there. Also, their overtime percentages. So if you're trying to limit the number uh, your overtime percentage, you can also look at that as also a KPI. And then this is where we look at that projected hours and variance amounts. And I'm actually going to turn it over to uh, somebody else now, um, and that's going to be Christian Contreras, and he's going to talk a little bit about. One of our customers who's been with us since 2014, ISS Cleaning Services. Um, ISS is they're a global facility service provider with over um, 50,000 employees in more than 55 countries, and you know they provide that cleaning support, property uh, management, um, facility management services, security, and catering as part of their their portfolio. Um, so Christian, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk. So. All you. Awesome. Thank you, John. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as John mentioned, my name is Christian Contreras, and uh, I, I kind of like to think of myself as a uh, power user of ePay's TLM system. Now, at ISS, we started the process of developing um, our own internal analytics using a third party tool. Now, in doing that, we did this more so to assist our own research to back up our hunch that there was some dollar savings to be made in our labor numbers. Now we, however, uh, did not have uh, any solid numbers to provide any validity to that hunch. So with that, we called ePay, uh, leaned on them and essentially began a partnership to develop the tools for us and customers alike to be able to not only have a better view, but uh, I guess more to uh, better manage uh, labor. Now this uh, allowed us to be able to maintain tight wage and hour compliance, but at the same time run a lean back office, which you know, simply improved our overall profitability straight across the board. Now, ISS took the five KPIs that uh, John mentioned just a short while ago, and um, we developed them and kind of dug into them and kind of just kind of saw where we could 
see that benefit. Now, this was done by first identifying the situations where manual timesheets were being used to capture employee time, and then ensure and ensuring that those same employees use the system properly. Now, this also meant that payroll, the true payroll department, could truly focus on payroll versus manual entry. Now, this alone reduced payroll processing admin time by astounding 95%. And yeah, that that loan number could 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 have stopped us and said, yeah, we've seen enough. But there was more uh, to look at. So another key point to take away from this scenario is that ePay's time and labor management system allowed us to push the payroll processing function to the field operators and to the field users where it belongs. Now ISS also was able to then quickly identify which locations and managers had pay rate changes, and ensure that those employees were paid with the proper budgeted amount for the job which further ensured job profitability. Now, as many of you know, the facilities industry is driven on low margins and key to the success of your businesses. So it was very key that we got that under control immediately. And we also were then able to identify who was changing time cards and why, which then also allowed us to reach, retrain not only the employees, but also our managers to avoid issues altogether. Now this el eliminating uh, touches to time data reduced our compliance risk and uh, made us very confident in our data in the event of an audit. Now, finally, the real-time analytics also allowed ISS to send notifications of problems enabling our managers to immediately identify issues and significantly uh, de decrease the number of missed and incorrect punches, as well as emphasizing the importance of daily time review and time correction. With all this being said, all these items mentioned resulted in an immediate return of investment on an, uh, and an overall 1% cost savings in total labor spend for the company. Now, 1% may not seem much, but when 1% over 17,000 employees, that is a big, big number. This was actually close to a seven-figure reduction in payroll dollars out the door. The benefit was actually immediate, and not to sound cliche here, but this piece alone, more than more than paid for itself. Now, bottom line, the ePay, the ePay WPID product is very easy to use, it is available with the TL, TLM system now. Um, ePay will gladly work with you to help you understand not only how to use the WPID, but more, more so also um, as to how to better view your labor using these same analytics. And my recommendation for all of you on the call today um, as being a user would be that all of you check out the WPID module immediately and start reaping the benefits as I and ISS saw. Now with that, I'll, I guess uh, I'll stop talking. That's a little, just a little blurb on uh, <laughs> that I have my story and my successes, but uh, thank you, John. Thank you, Michelle, for allowing me to uh, share that with everybody. Thank you, Christian. I, I, I appreciate that story because it, it's an important one to tell, um, you know, because when you really start to look at those analytics and start to identify where those areas of improvement are, you're really helping that bottom line. So I, I appreciate that. Welcome, thank you. Great. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for your time today. Great, a great uh, partnership with your company there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap up. Again, at ePay, obviously you today, you saw a lot of our workforce management functionality and what we can provide uh, our clients, a very ro robust workforce management system. We didn't even talk about some of our data collection devices, both our our clocks and our mobile app. Um, but we are a full HCM solution provider, and we have a full HCM solution that includes applicant tracking, HR and onboarding, benefit admin, of course the time and labor management, payroll and tax, and even performance management. And having all of this together can in, in increase the savings that you might be looking for. You know, time and labor, we think for a blue collar workforce is a way to start and to get in there because we can see huge savings as Christian just said his company saw almost a seven figure savings saving one percent of labor costs but you can also see it the next area is in recruiting and onboarding so automating this whole process is really key so thank you again for joining us today we appreciate the your time and your efforts on the next slide um, it tells you a little bit about an offering that we have for you. So when you close out today, you're just going to be asked to take a really quick survey, no big deal, 
and uh, we will automatically send out today's slides. But we'd love to talk to you one on one. John does a great demonstration, prepares for you ahead of time, knowing what your business is about, and will walk you through time and labor or the whole solution. So no worries there. And then we also have an offer for you, um, which I think you might find important. Uh, there, if you look at some of our content online, we have things that um, can help you uh, identify maybe some different time theft areas and uh, areas that where you can uh, try to increase your savings. So we even talk about clocks today, but one of the things that we have is a calculator where you can figure out, hmm, how much is really walking out the door? In addition to some of the things John talked about, changing rates on employees or um, having issues with how long it takes to correct changes and so on. So we've got a lot of tools to help you and we would love to get engaged and help you through that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Christian, for your time today. You're and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, John, for your great demonstration. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Christian, again. And thank you, everybody that joined us today. I know half hour is that is not a lot of time, but it is important for, for people to get something out of it. So hopefully you guys did. Great. Have a great day. And at ePay, we would like to be your partner. Goodbye. <laughs>